Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and today we are going to do another podcast episode. It's been a few weeks since we checked in. I'm still struggling with trying to figure out a good schedule to get things up. Sometimes I do and have time to kind of batch my content over uh, a few days to get it out and scheduled and sometimes life just happens. So it's been a few weeks, but I have progress markers on all my projects to get you up to speed on where I'm at, uh, my one finished object for the video, and some plans that I have in the future. Grab your project, grab something to drink, and let's get into the video. So first, this is the Lonnie Crop uh, from Courtney Clark. Uh, I love Tinderbox on Instagram and uh it's way too big so i usually wear it with um uh, a t-shirt underneath uh so i'm very matchy matchy in my purple uh today and so um this was my first garment and uh i under i overestimated my bust size uh so that's what led to it being super big i just thought i had a larger chest than i did and i do have a large chest it was just like about five inches too big. <laughs> so I tend to just style it with a t-shirt underneath. So my first uh, project to update you on is my Muna Cardi. It's actually the finished object of the video um, and my third finished object for the year. Uh, I'm on a pace for uh you know about 12 objects um uh for the year but you'll see i'm working on two others that are going to be wrapped up uh in the next week so this is the municardi it's from tl yarn crafts tony lipsy of tl yarn crafts and it's a tunisian crochet cardigan um it is uh i made size 2XL, which corresponds with the 50 inch bust. Um, my uh, pattern gauge is 15 stitches by 13 rows. My pattern gauge ended up being about 16 stitches by 15 rows. Um, and my finished bust size ended up being approximately 50, 51 inches. It just depends on kind of how I lay it out, but about 50 to 51 inches. So I I pretty much hit the size that it was supposed to be. I made the pattern um, a little bit different. I sized up because um, my chest is usually a 43, 44, and um, it was supposed to be a little bit of negative ease, um, styled with negative ease, and I did not want that as a cardigan. Um, and so I knew I wanted to size up I actually think I would have liked it a little bit bigger, but I think that would have required some math and I did not want to do any math because the next size up would have been, I think, like maybe a 56 or 58 inch. I didn't want to risk it being way too big, uh, but in the end, uh, it ended up being about a 50 to 51 inch bust, which is perfect for me in terms of like uh, an open cardigan. And uh, it gives me enough positive ease. Um, it was a very easy project. It only took me about a month. Um, it's mostly simple stitch. So most of the body is simple stitch. And then the details uh, around the neckline on the bottom of the sleeves and um, the hem are all honeycomb. And so honeycomb was a new kind of stitch pattern for me, but since honeycomb is made up of simple and pearl stitches, I already I knew those. So it was the first time I've done a project with honeycomb stitch, but it was very easy for me to kind of put together. So the yarn I used for this is Baliora Fibers Tweed DK. Um, in the uh, colorway Fingles Cave. Um, I've talked about this, but I had a little uh, issue. I'm hoping it comes up on camera, but I have had a little issue 
uh, where the color uh, one skein must have just been off and it was the first skein I used. And so I got a little kind of ombre striping. And so at some point in the back of the panel, I had to start alternating skeins because it would have been a very clear delineation of uh, the, the yarn. In hindsight, I probably should have just ripped back, but by the time I noticed it, I was like, I'm too lazy. <laughs> and I, you know, it, it is fine. I put it on the back panel, so it's not that noticeable. You can notice it a little bit on the front panels, uh, but everybody I've talked to with my knitting groups is like, it looks intentional. It looks like that was the effect that I was going for. Um, I also noticed with this yarn, I had a little bit of one of the skeins. It wasn't all the skeins, but one of the skeins, it looks like it didn't set all the way because I was starting to get black on my hands from when I was crocheting it. And so um, I made sure, you know, like when I was blocking it, I didn't see anything come out when I was blocking. So I don't know if what happened there but that's normal with hand dyed yarn you know some things cannot get set all the way it wasn't the end of the world but this pattern I loved I'm actually considering in the future perhaps doing it again but instead of the simple stitch doing the knit stitch um I couldn't have done that with this um because I was almost right almost running out of yarn um, the pattern actually calls for two pockets. I have not done the pockets yet. I'm still considering this a finished object. Um, I might do the pockets in the future, but I, I have like maybe half a skein of yarn left and I was worried about running out of yarn because I, you know, this was a pre-order yarn, so I wouldn't have had any options. And so I wanted to make sure that it got seamed together and all of the pieces that made the cardigan got put on and together um and so I'll probably save the pockets for another day because pockets are I love pockets and so um I should do a pocket I'm also considering putting a pocket like maybe perhaps putting it on the inside but then that would make it visible like some of the stitching coming through so pocket for a later day future Amanda problems I'm not dealing with that with now but I've actually worn this oof, probably seven or eight times since I finished it. I finished it a few weeks ago, uh, maybe about two, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. And I've worn it probably six to 12 times um, since I finished it. And so um, the yarn has started peeling a little bit, but it's also because this is tweed, some, it's hard for me to delineate between the tweed like nips and then the pilling, but I'm still, you know, I have to figure out how to shave uh, Tunisian because I feel like I, I just want to make sure that I'm not harming the work. Um, but especially around like my arms, it's there's definitely, you know, because I've worn it a lot. Um, so before I put it away, probably for the season, um, I will likely give it a bath again and um, maybe shave it. Or I'll, again, save that for future Amanda's problem um, once the kind of warmer season starts upon us here. And we're in Southern California. But I do work in an office, and so uh, wearing this to work, especially in the AC, is really helpful having this and this is why I wanted uh I love cardigans and this is why I made it so uh this is the Municardi from Tony Lipsy TL Yarn Crafts I love it I love it love it love it and it will definitely be a staple it's already a staple in my wardrobe but it will definitely be a staple um and I can have some handmade sweaters instead of wearing sweaters that I've bought uh, over the years. That is my one and only finished object for the video, but I'm very happy. So I've, this is, like I said, if this is my third finished object for the year, I was probably very over ambitious with the, uh, 24 and 24, 
but it's fun just to see what uh, I can get done in a year. So let's move on to my whips. Sorry, pen. So the, the one whip I'm not gonna talk about is my Fairbanks shawl. And I know we're probably all saying, Amanda, didn't you say you were gonna get your Fairbanks shawl done by the end of February? Right, I did say that. But I then had another test come up and, um, or test project that I wanted to do come up and it had a shorter window deadline. Um, and so I said, oh, the Fairbanks can wait. And so my goal now is hopefully Fairbanks by the end of March, early April. Uh, bef once I'm finished the two pattern tests that I have before I start uh, any new project. So let's see. So hopefully the next video you'll see a finished Fairbanks shawl. Um, the next video is probably going to aim, it's going to have a lot of finished objects. So that'll be good. Um, but we're not going to talk about the Fairbanks shawl in today's video. First uh, project we're going to talk about is my pattern test uh, for Jennifer Lovett at violet.loops on Instagram. And it's called the sincere shawl and it's munched up so you're not going to be able to see as much as uh you would like or i would like to show you but this is the sincere shawl i'm using um sincere fiber company so it's a collaboration with sincere fiber co um i'm using two of her um, skeins. This one, this variegated tone, um, the variegated is called Winter's Night. And then the solid tonal here is called um, Indecision. And so I'm actually almost done with this, uh, but this is due in about a week and a half. I have one more of the lattice and one more of the tonal section to go um I think I so lattice stitch was new for me um and I don't know how I feel about it my gauge is really tight on the lattice stitch just my tension in general um I've kind of figured it out a little bit on how best to do the lattice stitch and make it a lot looser um more breathable but my shawl is a lot smaller than I anticipate it to finish out as um and I think that that is a tension issue um but I still think it'll be it'll make to a nice large enough size once it's blocked and I'll probably block it pretty hard um but yeah the lattice stitch is very time consuming um and I you know I tend to be very tight on it. And so it wouldn't be like my, if I had to make a sweater out of the last stitch, I don't think that would be a hard pass. I, that would turn me off. <laughs> I just, I don't like it. Um, but it is an easy enough pattern to identify like when you're counting, like I don't count anymore. I just kind of look at my rows just to make sure like I come along make sure everything looks right. And then I count maybe every third or fourth row instead of counting every single row because um, as long as like your beginning stitches look right, your end stitches look right, and your middle stitches look right, as long as you can see the twos, um, everything in, in kind of twos, um, then it's fine. So the last time we checked in, uh, about two or three weeks ago, I was here. So I definitely have made some progress. Um, I've done two tonals and basically two of the variegated. And like I said, I have one of each left. Uh, and then that is done. And uh, I'll get pictures taken of it and get it submitted. And so that is the Sincere Shawl from Violet Loops on Instagram, violet.loops, Jennifer Love It. And it will be another awesome shawl that I have in my wardrobe. I love 
shawls and cowls uh, just pairing it with like a plain tee it really dresses up just a plain tee uh, like a sweater and a plain tee so I will have all the details on my Instagram when the pattern goes live along with some final pictures um, but definitely in the next video, you will get a finished object kind of final review for this sincere shawl. The next work in progress that I'm going to share with you is the driftwood vest. You haven't seen it on the channel because it was just kind of a last minute decision to sign up for this test. Um, it was a pretty quick turnaround. It was, uh, it's only about a four week turnaround. Um, the pattern is super cute and it looks like knitting. Um, I was really intrigued about one of the, uh, kind of panel pieces to see like what stitch that was. Um, and so this is the Driftwood Vest from Kayla Wood at K Crochet's. And, um, I'm actually, this is the back panel and it's a vest and I'm using Ella Ray Cozy Alpaca, which is a, an acrylic alpaca blend. Um, it's super soft and scrumptious. Um, I would say though that the ply is an issue and I feel like with my Tunisian crochet hooks, it kind of flattens the ply. Um, it's not a tight ply and so it kind of flattens, which can cause some splitting um, when I'm trying to work the stitches and it makes it a little bit slower that way um, versus something that has a better ply. But it's a super cute uh, crocheted vest. Um, I love, this is like a honeycomb stitch and then this gorgeous uh, garter looking section. Um, and then, so this is all Tunisian and then it has like a simple um, crocheted border. It's going to have that all around the armholes as well as the neckline. So, um, I'm almost done actually. So this is the back panel. I'm almost done the front panel. Um, you can see, as you can see, I'm about, oof, let's see, probably have about um it's not as tall you're the back the front panel you don't go as many rows but I think I have like three or four more rows on the front panel before I start um shaping for the straps here um and then I will bind it all together and sew it all together and then do the regular crochet um ribbing accents along the neckline and the armholes and then this puppy will be done because it's due next Friday. So I've got to get it done um, and get some pictures taken. Um, I'm a little kind of having regrets on the yarn choice. I wish I had done something not in acrylic, but you live and learn. Or I, I should have requested a larger size just because it's not going to block a little bit bigger and it is supposed to have negative ease. I just, you know, I have body is image issues. And so I'm a little worried about like how tight it's going to be, but we're just trusting the process, trusting the measurements and hope everything will be okay. Um, in the end. And so, um, so yeah, this is the driftwood vest from K crochets, Kayla Wood. And uh, this will be a finished object in our next uh, check-in. So I'm excited to show you the finished objects and some finished object photos. Um, so that way you can kind of see the full details because this is gorgeous. I honestly would totally love to see her take this and make a sweater out of it because I could see her doing this same type of accent with the uh, pearl over here and then the honeycomb over here all coming all down uh, the arm. I think that would be really, really, really cool detail. Um, so I don't know how hard would it would be for her to modify this pattern into a full blown sweater, but I think that would be really, really cool. 
And so I'm excited to have uh, this object done. So we'll have two finished objects by our next check-in. So that will be uh, really, really cool, maybe even three. So we're gonna shoot for three with that Fairbank shawl, but we're gonna have at least two uh, before, uh, by the time we check in next. The last work in progress that I'm going to update you guys on before we get into future plans is my Lento. And I haven't worked on it actually in a week or two because um, I am prioritizing finishing the test patterns first. But I'm almost done with the yoke. So I'll show you where we were. We were at this little hat the last time we were together. And I am almost done the yoke. I think I have about six or seven more rows uh, before I split for sleeves. And uh, I'm loving it. Like, it's a super, I love it. Like, it's not looking right because Obviously, I, I have it on a long cord, but um, it's still bunched up. But I am loving it so far. It's a really mindless project because it's just stockinette. Um, as long as I keep track of my increases. And I'm starting to get better about noticing what an increase row looks like. Um, say if I were to Put the project down and then have to pick it back up so right now i don't put that like i have to be done a row mark off the row um and then i can put the project down um and now we're getting into the like almost 250 stitches plus in the round um section so um i've made quite a bit of progress since we last checked in at least for me like as a baby knitter like that's quite a bit of progress. Um, and this is my first knitted garment. I'm using Ruby and Rose's um, yarn, their, her Surrey base, and then her 8515 nylon or sock um, merino, superwash merino and nylon base. Um, and I'm not even halfway, I think I might be like just halfway done their Surrey skein. And um, the nylon actually still has a little bit more. It's more than this because I had kind of fakakta the whole, like the, there's more than this left in the first um, fingering weight uh, yarn because I had gotten this all messed up when I was uh, winding it and so uh, it ended up actually coming in three pieces so this is actually my second ball and the third ball is actually the, the largest so I would say I still have at least half for each um, and I've you know gotten pretty far um, and so we'll split for sleeves hopefully um, by the time I check in well maybe not by the time I check in with you next but um by the end of March, we'll say, uh, I do want to split for sleeves. I don't know how to split for sleeves. No, I'm just, uh, but it's something, I don't know how to split for sleeves, but again, we're on a learning journey. So, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, let's move our progress marker. I, I should do that. Well, the other two, they're gonna be finished, but let's move the progress marker. So that way we can see how far I make it uh, at our next check-in. So we're gonna put this on this stitch here um, so that you can see. So once again, this is the Lento, my first knitted uh, garment. I am learning a lot. Um, I did short rows shaping, um, which I now kind of like get a lot better in my head. Um, and there's definitely some, some mistakes in here uh, that I'm hoping I can kind of like 
I'm not going to fix that. I can't fix them at this point because I'd have to tear all this up. But uh, I might be able to kind of like internally fix them or they're just kind of what makes it a very unique one of a kind piece. And so they're not noticeable. They're only noticeable to me. Like, so. And yeah. So that is my last whip. Now we'll go on to my next two future projects and tests. So the next part of the video, I'm just going to talk about two other um, pattern tests that I have coming up. And I wanted to show you the yarn choices from my stash. Uh, um, and so the first one I'm going to show you because it's due first. So the first, um, the next pattern test that I'm going to be doing is called the the indecision sampler and what's really cool about it it's uh for violet loops jen lovett of violet loops and uh what's really cool about it is you can pick and choose um how to like sample or how to put together your sections so it's a sampler of a bunch of different tunisian crochet um stitches and the way she's designed it is you can do um, pick and choose whatever sections you want to do in whatever order you want to do, um, which is super cool. And so like, say if you don't like doing the honeycomb stitch um, or the lattice stitch, you might want to make that like uh, one of your first sections because you're not going to be spending as much time and yarn on that section. Um, and then uh, say the knits, um, the Tunisia knit stitch, which I like, I wouldn't mind that being like, say one of my last pad, uh, my last section. So it's really, really cool. Um, and then there's a couple of stitches in there, or stitch patterns that I have not done before. I know the smock stitch is in there and the reverse stitch and maybe something else. So it's really cool. I'm really excited to see it work up, um, but I'm going to be using three skeins of uh, Sorella yarn cashmere sock. Um, it's an 80, 10, 10, um, wool cashmere nylon one. And, um, what's really cool is because it's a sampler, I really wanted to do a semi-solid, uh, tonal because, um, I really want the stitches to really shine. And I feel like if I had done something too variegated or too speckly you're not gonna you're gonna lose the stitches and I think that this pattern really is all about the stitches so I'm gonna be using Hep Alien which is from the Gilmore Girls collection it's this gorgeous pink and pink is my color in terms of wearing and so I'm really excited about this so I'm gonna use three skeins of that because the pattern calls for about 1200 skeins so I'm really excited to see that work up. That's going to be due at the beginning of May. Um, so I'm excited to get that wound up. I'm actually probably going to be wounding, winding up a bunch of yarn this week because I like to yarn. I like to wind. I like to wind yarn in batches um, because I hate <laughs> winding yarn with my Swift. And so I can only kind of uh, handle it. In batches and so I'm gonna set it up and uh, probably wind some yarn this week uh, so that those projects are ready to go once I'm ready to have something new on my hooks. Um, the next project that I'm going to be doing after that is another test for Jen at Violet Loops and it's the full fade shawl. The next project that I'm going to be doing, the next project after that test um, that I'm going to be doing is a pattern test once again for Jen at Violet Loops and it is the full fade shawl um, and I did her full fade cowl which was a Tunisian crochet um, cowl uh, which was really cool because it was done in the round so you've got to have a double ended crochet hook or Tunisian crochet hook 
and um, I really wanted to use stash busting yarn and since it's supposed to be a fade what's really cool about this pattern is she um, lets us design our own fade she gives you options um, so like if you want to do a bunch of minis if you wanted to do a three skein fade you could do a traditional three skein fade where you kind of alternate for a few rows until you go into your second color uh, you could um, do a middle that's just every other of the first two colors and then it switches and then every other of the second two color uh, this the second and third color and so I chose to do um, a three skein fade because the thought of weaving in all those ends, 15, 20 colors worth of ends, was not something I really wanted to do. And since I know I have the Fairbank shawl and I have to weave in all those ends, I was like, I don't want a project that I have to weave in so many ends. Um, and so with the fade, I can just kind of carry the yarn up. So I'm going to be using stash yarn again. Um, and I am going to be using three skeins of Montana crochet in the colorways on the left. We've got Jefferson in the middle is Madison and on the right, my right is Gallatin. And so it's this beautiful blues, green, a little bit of greens, browns, yellows um, that look really well together and were designed to be a, a fade. So um, I think the hardest one is I feel like these two are very similar. I can see just a slight difference because there's a lot less white in the darker one. Um, so, uh, but that's the whole point. It's supposed to just look like a seamless fade. So, um, I'm really excited to get that. That is going to come out later in probably June because it's not due till early June. So I will be prioritizing the indecision sampler first, and then I'll cast this on, um, uh, because I don't want to cast on too many since she's given us such generous kind of uh, testing windows. Um, I'm going to prioritize so that I can also keep working on other projects um, at the same time. That is it for today's video. If you liked my video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I do podcasts. I do vlogs. I take you along to fiber festivals when I go to them. And I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I will see you in the next one. Bye now.